Podcast and broadcast friends. Jay Corbett here, CorbettReport.com. You're tuned into Corbett Report Radio here on this Thursday evening and Thursday nights in the last half of the program. We've had James Evan Pilato of Media Monarchy with us here, and you might remember him from such online viral YouTube video news updates as New World Next Week at NewWorldNextWeek.com. But at any rate, I'm sure many of you do know James's work. If not, please check it out at MediaMonarchy.com. Tonight we're going to be talking about one of his sister sites, foodworldorder.com and we're going to be talking about the latest in food health and the environment. James great to have you back on the program but first up I think you have an uh, update about that internet bill about the yeah the the SOPA bill you you got me wondering about it the stop online piracy act SOPA tweet triggers political explosion delays vote and actually Declan McCullough of CNET writes about the marathon debate in the house was derailed when representative Steve King of Iowa tweeted quote we are debating the stop online piracy act and Sheila Jackson has so bored me that I'm killing time by surfing the internet end quote and they objected and the hearing ground to a sudden halt so we may have to brace ourselves to see what happens here on December 16th, tomorrow, Friday, here in the States. Yeah, I don't remember that part of the uh, when bills become law, you know, <laughs> Saturday morning cartoon. <laughs> yeah, anyway. you have to tweet about it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, well, shifting then into foodworldorder.com, and as I say, if people aren't checking this out, they should be, because I just noticed myself, you've got daily <laughs> updates here, tons of information coming out every day on Food World Order, so... I don't know what you want to hit up. What what do you got up for us first? Well, and I think that that has been the great thing actually about you and I taking on these these Food World Order updates is as soon as we kind of locked in to do it, I thought, oh, oh well, I've got to have a content then. So I've I've tried to step it up and make sure that I get new content on the site at least you know posted every day. So if if folks would go to the site right now, they would see what I put up on all the sites pretty much on Thursday nights as I prepare, prepare for my live radio show Friday mornings, I put up what I call kind of a news purge, and that's generally just a collection of headlines that I either didn't have time for or perhaps just don't warrant a, a post in and of themselves. But if they go to foodworldorder.com right now, they'll see the 1215 binge and purge, nanotech, girl hunter, and more. And the first one, I think, is a highly important one about nanotechnology in food. And we've got a couple different stories. One going to organicconsumers.org. In the absence of regulations, nonprofit releases new framework for companies to evaluate safety. And this is Dateline, San Francisco. A first-of-its-kind framework released offers recommendations to food and food packaging companies on how to identify and evaluate nanomaterials in products. Not only is this technology unregulated and untested for its implications on public health, but companies may not even be aware if they are using products made with nanomaterials. The sourcing framework for food and food packaging products containing nanomaterials presents what companies should ask about their suppliers regarding the safety of products containing nanomaterials. So the quick breakdown for myself and maybe other folks out there. Nanotechnology is the science of manipulating matter at the molecular scale to build structures, tools, or products. This emerging science offers many new opportunities for food industry applications, such as nutritional additives, stronger flavorings, and colorings. But what this is talking about is the food packaging. We're not, not even talking about the actual food that we may digest that may have nanomaterials just this new style of packaging. So in the absence of any kind of regulation or any kind of testing on what it's going to do, independent, I believe, and other nonprofit groups have stepped up to say, you know, let's look at this. Have you discussed nanotech very much on, on your sites? Almost nothing at all on nanotech, actually. And it is uh, an extremely important thing and becoming, of course, more and more important as the technology develops. So it's something that we need to get into. And it's it, it's really overwhelming fighting not only the, the good fight against RGBH and milk and things like that, but then the GMOs and now nanotech. And it's like the technology is evolving faster than we can even keep up with, let alone fight against. Uh -huh. it's, it is really kind of amazing because just as you were even saying it, it's like, yeah, because just as we figure out, you know, what what to look for and, you know, high fructose corn syrup and all those things, you know, the words kind of out for the most part, thankfully, on a lot of those things. But this nanotechnology, I mean, we're, we're talking 21st century space-aged style technologies. 
and it could package our food, and we don't know what it's going to do or how it's going to affect us, but, ah, uh, hell, let's go for it. Indeed. Yeah, no, it's it's exactly like that, isn't it? It's the exact same way that GMOs and things have been just slipped in and then have the debate about it well, well after the fact. Mm -hmm. I think that's the kind of the template that they're going to use for all of these things. And again, it's not to say that nanotech couldn't be used in a, in a great way to, to improve things. But I think we have to be careful about how it's being done and when it's being done by the usual suspects of, you know, the big, uh, big, big big food um, mm -hmm. and it's going to be controlled by the same people who are interested in they're implementing their depopulation agenda and i think we have to keep that in mind now we do at least have just the handful and smattering of of well-meaning and decent folks within our congress here in the states a couple of days ago dennis kucinich democrat rep out of ohio put out a, a press release and also announced legislation and his press release that even goes, you know, just to his website, kucinich.house.gov is about protecting our food supply from manufactured crises. We must take steps to prevent genetically engineered organisms from being grown in a way that could do irreversible damage to our food supply. Under pressure from profit-minded industry, we have already allowed the spread of genetically modified crops into our agriculture at great cost to our economy and with unknown effects on our bodies, said Kucinich. So, James, I think that pretty much continues the nanotech idea, and you correctly yeah, tied in GMO to that. Yeah, unfortunately, it is of a piece. And uh, and again, I think they're just developing a template for trying to bring these types of uh, technologies to market before people have a chance to have any say over them or even un any understanding mm -hmm. what it is. I mean, ask the average person what nanotech in food actually means. And most people have a dim if uh, understanding, if any at all, uh, including myself. I'm largely mm -hmm. ignorant on this issue. It's an extremely important issue, but just not one that I've been researching uh, hard enough, I guess. I think maybe maybe something I said last week was, you know, starting the food site just as starting, you know, the cyberspace war or the religion site or, or any of the other areas that I that I cover makes me go in search of news sources for those. And I follow and collect and subscribe to a lot of feeds, and that's pretty much how I kind of source together and do things. Of course, in addition to the fantastic news tips from from everybody out there, as you were referencing just a little bit ago. But a site that I, I catch interesting things from now and again is called confectionarynews.com. And it's interesting, I think, because it's essentially not really for the general public. It's meant for people in kind of the food production industry. And James, here are some good news for you. Machine prevents marshmallow shape loss. A new machine, thank God. That is what... <laughs> at last. Ex at last. That's that's what money and all the R&D and everything's going into is keeping our marshmallows with their shape. So if we wonder, you know, about the hell in a handbasket, it maybe lies in things like that. <laughs> what is the shape of a marshmallow anyway? I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Cylindrical. Now I won't uh, I won't take the time to try and run down and give you every kind of headline that that's on Food World Order. As I said, I maybe just kind of cherry picked some of the stories that'll maybe whet people's appetites to go check check some of these things out. And oh, you know, I forgot I was going to mention maybe at the very top of the show that I did. And coming into this, I did just have a nice home cooked meal of of stir fry. Maybe maybe each week I'll, I'll mention you know the, the nice <laughs> home, home cooked meal I had just to kind of set set the table, if you will. But yeah. uh yeah, nice. Wet our appetites and set the table. You're full of the uh the punniness tonight. That's great. Um and just for the record, I just had my lunch here in Japan and it was uh not quite as healthy. Actually, I can't even tell you what all of it was. It's just it's wonderful <laughs> Japanese food, but um but it was good. I, I, well, I wasn't I sure if you if you meant you, you could t you couldn't tell us or that you weren't going to weren't going to tell us. <laughs> No, there was unfortunately a bit of fried chicken in there, but just a little bit. And then, uh, you know, rice cakes, just the usual kind of <laughs> Thursday, uh, Friday afternoon lunch. All right, silliness. Okay, any other headlines you want to go to or should well, we go to some calls? Well, I was going to mention one other on this on this binge and purge that we call uh, the list of headlines. The photo that I add to this post I think is a rather alluring photo of a cover of a new book called Girl Hunter revolutionizing the way we eat one hunt at a time. And I grabbed this story from the Daily Mail. Former investment banker becomes a chef, buys a gun, and learns how to hunt her own 
food. She used to be hobnobbing with the high rollers in Manhattan and said she would kind of watch the, you know, the food cart go by and the commissary and go, is this really what it's about? And realizing that, oh, if I'm going to eat meat, I, I need to go kill it. So, of course, being kind of well-to-do and you can suddenly decide that you want to go move to the country and learn how to be a hunter, already being well-off kind of affords you the ability to do that and know that you have a safety net. But pretty fascinating that I think, you know, that, again, even the sort of so-called elites are already, as, as we've seen probably the last several years, taking back to nature. Exactly. And I think, yeah, it, very much the elites know what's going on and, and know which way the wind's blowing. And that's not to say that the elites is some kind of monolithic entity. Mm -hmm. I think they, a lot of them who are in the middle and lower ranks of the elites, they don't know what's coming next any more than, than the rest of us yeah. do. They just have the, uh, they can read the tea leaves like we can. And, uh, and that's why you see so many millionaires and billionaires buying, buying land or buying mm -hmm. or even spaces and, you know, faraway islands trying to get away from what's unfortunately coming to pass right now in America. So I think this is part of it. And uh, it's an interesting, I don't, I don't know if it's a trend, but it's an interesting idea mm -hmm. anyway. And I think you're right. Only the, uh, only the very uh, wealthy can afford to to go off and learn how to hunt and cook for themselves and things when uh, when most of us are just struggling to to just put a roof over our head and food on the table from a day to day basis. So so it is uh, unfortunately an indication of, of where things are going. And I certainly hope that more people can do that. But uh, we'll, uh -huh. we'll see what comes of it. Well, and I'm sure, you know, we could we could all do it, but I think it's, you know, like I say, kind of having the ability to know you could do it with a safety net. And if you go, ooh, I don't like this, you could run back to the city, you know. That or it, if it, you're it, no good at it, like I probably would be. <laughs> I'll mention one other headline. British town grows all of its own vegetables, improved civic life, reduced crime results. And that is from naturalnews.com. Well, that is a nice little headline, isn't it? And uh, that's pretty much what we're aiming towards, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So I think, yeah, that's uh, if to try and lead it to to uh, a, a positive point. But I'd I'd love to take to take calls. All right. Cool. Well, we've got a couple of callers waiting patiently on the line. So we've got Michael in Seattle, not too far from James there in Portland. Uh, Michael, thanks for joining us tonight. Nice Michael, are you, you on the line? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear okay. me? Okay. Yes, I can. Go ahead. Yeah, I've been uh, happy to uh, wait patiently because I wanted to say hello to both of you. I appreciate your work very much. One thing I wanted to say to James Evan Pilato is, uh, given all the headlines that you've found, uh, do you think that there is a chance that, uh, especially this last one where the people in England were gathering together, do you think that a movement uh, amongst disaffected people who are worried about the New World Order of joining together and forming communities of food and growing, do you think that might be the next wave is better than worrying about Internets being shut down and all that? That really maybe is what hopefully the legacy Le and legacy sounds like it's gone, but that something that Occupy would become, that it would become, you know, occupy that that abandoned lot in your neighborhood and, and start yeah. making a garden. Definitely. I, yeah, I mean, when it comes down to it, you know, and there's lots of fear mongering about, you know, electromagnetic pulse sending us back to the dark ages. So, yeah, I mean, we could very well find ourselves not worrying about, you know, online piracy legislation because there might not be an online so, I mean, yeah, that yeah. that is, I mean, and James, you would probably agree. It's like that has to be the wave. I couldn't agree more because as you point out, all of this Internet stuff and everything, of course, has enabled me to come to you and all of this. Mm -hmm. But really, I mean, it is the interdependence. It's the web that's catching us all, and it's going to make us more and more dependent on the system overall. So the ultimate solution has to come at a community level, and it has to come from people learning how to do things for themselves without any of this uh, technology to help people because they can pull the plug on that at any time, like with this SOAP Act and all these other things they're trying to do, but they can't pull the plug on people who know how to take care of themselves and live off the land. You know, back in the day when I first got into all this, people were saying guns, gold, and groceries. But I sat down and thought about it. People with guns will gain something for a short while until somebody with a faster gun shows up. 
People with gold can buy guns and groceries until the gold runs out. But the people who grow groceries, everybody's going to be talking to them. Yeah, that's an absolute, that's just a truism, isn't it? And it's something that we often tend to forget. All right, Michael, excellent points. Thank you for the call. We've got another caller on the line also patiently waiting. We have Tom in Wisconsin. So, Tom, thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, fellas, can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. we can. Go ahead. Excellent. Um, James, I've, I've caught your work on and off over the years, and you do a some work. I haven't uh, looked into your, your co-host guests here at the moment, um, but I'll try to check that when I get off the call. Um, I really just wanted to say that you mentioned earlier that, that, that all of these things that are happening are like the quickening into the depopulation agenda. And, and it, is, it is the, by the wrecking of, of this infrastructure that's been built uh, on technology, by wrecking all this intentionally, people that have, um, and like, the, you know, the banking families and, and their minions that have, have hoarded some of the real material wealth, um, when they wreck all this, they're going to be able to sit off on the reservations and and watch the the bedlam you know play out, and um, you know ultimately it is it is going to be the return to the land um, that is going to be the one thing that will save whoever is able to think clearly through all of the craziness that will take place when these systems are finally wrecked, like a ship you know being wrecked on on a shoreline. Um, and, and, and I, you know, Al Jones, you know, a lot of people have their opinions about what he does. And uh, I think, I think like most people, he only has so much information that he can cover with any kind of coherence. And um, there's one thing that he said to me that, that kind of came to mind when, when you were talking about the depopulation agenda and brought your guest on and talked about the back to the land. We're going to have to return to an agrarian society that is able to interface with the high technology to, to combat the encroachment on what we consider to be our rights, to liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And, and that agrarian society is really the only way that we can actually stay a stable, healthy, prosperous society and, and, not be, and, and be resistant, I guess, to the viruses of the modification that come to our society, our culture, through this high technology, and I, I, you know, I want to get your general comment on on that perspective. Of, All right, of well, that. we'll hold it there. We're coming up on a break, but we'll hold you over the break, and we'll come back to that topic, an extremely important one. It seems to be the theme of this evening here, as we've just gone over foodworldorder.com with James Evan Pilato. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back, friends. You're listening to Corbett Report Radio here on RBN, and we are entering the final few minutes of tonight's broadcast. And thank you all for listening in, and I certainly hope you'll be with us tomorrow night, where, of course, we'll be going through Friday night highlights and going into the archives of CorbettReport.com to highlight some of my previous work over the past five years. But tonight, of course, we're talking to James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com and FoodWorldOrder.com. And we're talking about the food world order, generally speaking. And I, uh, obviously, this is a, a subject that resonates with a lot of people who really do understand that uh, what exactly what's going on and how it's uh, going to play out. And really, the solution has to come from ourselves and our community level. And I think that's something a lot of people understand, including Tom from Wisconsin, who's online. So, Tom, you have anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, I mean, there's not too much to add because it take too long to get into. But what I will say is that um, the biggest problem that we will have is going to be the lack of food available for all the zombies that don't understand really what it takes to produce the food that will sustain for an entire year in the course of a growing season when this all comes down. I've, I, 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 well, I was going to say, I, I fear that you're right. And that, yeah, that that'll be the kind of people that'll just say, give me that. And in a way it's something kind of frightening that I see, you know, not to the degree that we're just now talking about, but I, I work at a grocery store. I work at a small Pacific Northwest only grocery store chain here in Portland. But I even see sometimes the, the you know, the disconnect from people when you tell them you're out of something or it's out of stock and it's like, but why? Like, don't you have more in the back? As if it's just this endless warehouse and it doesn't have to be produced, uh, you know, and and grown and harvested, let alone trucked and shipped and made here and packaged and all of those things. That disconnect right. can be that thing. 
Exactly, which relates back to what, uh, what uh, Tom was talking about before the break, which is that if we don't get back to the agrarian society, we're so disconnected from the land, we're so disconnected from the food supply, we're so disconnected from the, the, the basic physical reality of what food is and where it comes from that we do tend to think of it as just some, some stock, some product sitting in the back of a room somewhere, and all it has to do, there is some limitless supply. So unfortunately, the, the collapse that, that we know has been planned and is carefully calculated for a long time is something that will play into this agenda in a big way. And as I say, if you don't understand the eugenics agenda and the depopulation agenda, then in some ways you won't understand this at all, because at base, it's not about money. The elites have all the money they can ever create out of thin air. I mean, it's not that that's not what it's about. It's about power and controlling people. So uh, just a few seconds left here. Tom, anything else to add? Oh, and I wanted to say that with the 50 year plan with regards to the bankers and the gold, they've got most of the gold. So when they wipe out most population and they go back to a gold standard to control the population, uh, that kind of plays into it. If they have most gold and we go to a gold standard, there's not nearly enough gold for all the people that are alive right now. So, so a gold standard would, simply would not work, and neither would a silver standard. And unfortunately, most people just don't understand that. I, I hear you on that, and people who don't understand that need to watch Secret of Oz and see how the bankers have historically argued for the gold standard. So I think it's a little bit of, oh, don't throw me in the briar patch when they argue against it out in public, exactly like they supposedly argued against the Federal Reserve Act. A closing minute or so here, James. Uh, just throw out your websites one more time for people who haven't checked them out yet. The flagship website is MediaMonarchy.com. And, of course, we've been discussing FoodWorldOrder.com. But a great way to get the overview of a lot of them is actually on Twitter, at MediaMonarchy. And it'll let you know exactly when my live show starts tomorrow. That's it, Twitter.com, MediaMonarchy. Thanks so much, James and Plato. Thank you to Tom and Michael and John and mm-hmm. all the callers and, of course, all, the, all of you for listening. That's it for tonight's edition. edition. I'm looking forward to talking to you tonight, tomorrow night on Corbett Report Radio.